Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Lisa, and I'm here to share some words by Oswald Chambers. The first one is titled, The Key to the Missionary's Devotion. They went forth for his name's sake. 3 John, verse 7. Our Lord told us how our love for him is to exhibit itself when he asked, Do you love me? John 21, verse 17. And then he said, Feed my sheep. In effect, he said, Identify yourself with my interests in other people, not identify me with your interests in other people. 1 Corinthians 13, verses 4 through 8 shows us the characteristics of this love. It is actually the love of God expressing itself. The true test of my love for Jesus is a very practical one, and all the rest is sentimental talk. Faithfulness to Jesus Christ is the supernatural work of redemption that has been performed in me by the Holy Spirit. The love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Romans 5 verse 5 and it is that love in me that effectively works through me and comes in contact with everyone I meet. I remain faithful to His name, even though the common sense view of my life may seemingly deny that, and may appear to be declaring that He has no more power than the morning mist. The key to the missionary's devotion is that he is attached to nothing and to no one except our Lord himself. It does not mean simply being detached from the ex external things surrounding us. Our Lord was amazingly in touch with the ordinary things of life, but he had an inner detachment except toward God. External detachment is often an actual indication of a secret growing inner attachment to the things we stay away from externally. The duty of a faithful missionary is to concentrate on keeping his soul completely and continually open to the nature of the Lord Jesus Christ. The men and women our Lord sends out on his endeavors are ordinary human people, but people who are controlled by their devotion to him which has been brought about through the work of the Holy Spirit. And that's the end of the first word. And the second word is titled, The Unheeded Secret. Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. John 18, verse 36. The great enemy of the Lord Jesus Christ today is the idea of practical work that has no basis in the New Testament, but comes from the systems of the world. This work insists upon endless energy and activities, but no private life with God. The emphasis is put on the wrong things. Jesus said, The kingdom of God does not come with observation, for indeed the kingdom of God is within you. Luke 17, verses 20 and 21. It is a hidden, obscure thing. An active Christian worker too often lives to be seen by others, while it is the innermost, personal area that reveals the power of a person's life. We must get rid of the plague of the spirit of this religious age in which we live. In our Lord's life, there was none of the pressure and the rushing of tremendous activity that we regard so highly today. And a disciple is to be like his master. The central point of the kingdom of Jesus Christ is a personal relationship with him, not public usefulness to others. It is not the practical activities that are the strength of this Bible training college. 
Its entire strength lies in the fact that here you are immersed in the truths of God to soak in them before Him. You have no idea of where or how God is going to engineer your future circumstances and no knowledge of what stress and strain is going to be placed on you either at home or abroad. And if you waste your time in overactivity instead of being immersed in the great fundamental truths of God's redemption, then you will snap when the stress and strain do come. But if this time of soaking before God is being spent in getting rooted and grounded in Him, which may appear to be impractical, then you will remain true to Him, whatever happens. And that's the end of the second one. And the last one I'd like to share with you all is titled, Is God's Will My Will? This is the will of God, your sanctification. 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 3. Sanctification is not a question of whether God is willing to sanctify me. Is it my will? Am I willing to let God do in me everything that has been made possible through the atonement of the cross of Christ? Am I willing to let Jesus become sanctification to me and to let his life be exhibited in my human flesh? 1 Corinthians 1 verse 30 Beware of saying, Oh, I am longing to be sanctified. No, you are not. Recognize your need, but stop longing and make it a matter of action. Receive Jesus Christ to become sanctification for you by absolute, unquestioning faith, and the great miracle of the atonement of Jesus will become real in you. All that Jesus made possible becomes mine through the free and loving gift of God on the basis of what Christ accomplished on the cross. And my attitude as a saved and sanctified soul is that of profound, humble holiness. There is no such thing as proud holiness. It is a holiness based on agonizing repentance, a sense of inexpressible shame and degradation, and also on the amazing realization that the love of God demonstrated itself to me while I cared nothing about Him. Romans 5 verse 8 He completed everything for my salvation and sanctification. No wonder Paul said that nothing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 8, verse 39. Sanctification makes me one with Jesus Christ, and in Him one with God, and it is accomplished only through the magnificent atonement of Christ Never confuse the effect with the cause. The effect in me is obedience, service, and prayer, and is the outcome of inexpressible thanks and adoration for the miraculous sanctification that has been brought about in me because of the atonement through the cross of Christ. And that is the end of these words. I pray you all have a beautiful day in the Lord. God bless each and every one of you, and I will see you either next video or in the air. Bye-bye.